Are you kidding me? Do you know what you just... What the fuck, dude? What are you even... Are you recording me? Are you seriously recording me right now? That is so not cool. Actually, you know what? Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Film me. Think I care? Get me on tape, bitch. Make sure you get my good side because this is on you, man. This is not about me. This is all on you, jackass. Tell them how you jogged by me. Tell them how I was just walking my dog and... Hello, my name is Alan, and I am the man in the video titled Man with Pooch Has Corona Meltdown that was filmed without my permission while I was out uh, walking my dog yesterday and a very aggressive jogger almost ran into me. And this is Chester, my adorable and easily excitable puppy who you may also recognize from the aforesaid video, which is now rapidly making the rounds on social media. <clears throat> so yeah, okay, I had an angry outburst on the sidewalk, and that outburst was unfortunately captured on film. But what, what you've seen was taken very much out of context, and it does not tell the whole story, which is why I felt compelled to uh, respond personally. So here's what the video does not show. Twice a day I leave my house with Chester because he has to do his business. And <clears throat> we're outside for like, 10 minutes tops. And times being what they are, I'm hyper aware of my surroundings at all times. But yesterday, I made the mistake of turning my back for five seconds to pick up Chester's poop. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> this man, this jogger, came jogging right by me. Now, I would now like to address this, this jogger, this man who accosted me and then proceeded to film my reaction without my express consent. You, Mr. Jogger Man, saw me. I was bent over picking up that poop, but you saw me, you douchebag. You saw me, and I did not see you. You could have crossed the street. There was nothing but room out there, but you decided to come up on me and my dog unawares. You ran right by us like a dickwad, and you know the rules, six feet. Six feet, dipshit. Do, do you do you not know what six feet is? Or, or are you on the goddamn metric system? Because you came within two feet of us. Do I need to carry around a tape measure for asshats like you? So yeah, okay, I got angry because you behaved irresponsibly. Do you even read the newspaper? Or are you incapable of reading, you illiterate puke? All, all the papers. They say that you don't need to cough on someone to infect them after all, or sneeze on them. All you have to do is talk with someone who is infected or breathe the same air. That's where we are now. Read the New York Times. And if you don't want to read, then turn on CNN, you inconsiderate bastard, and listen to Dr. Sanjay Gupta. He's a certified medical professional who says that it can be transmitted by breathing on a person and you breathed on me. You penetrated my six foot radius and you breathed within my safe zone. How do you not know how to keep your freaking distance? People are dying, man. People are having to say goodbye to their loved ones on iPhones. I don't want to have to call my sister in Jersey and say, Peggy, I'm almost dead, but you can't come in here. So you have to say goodbye to me on FaceTime. FaceTime, man. It's fucking heartbreaking. You act like I'm the bad guy. You whip out your phone and you're like, oh, I'm going to record this kook having a meltdown. And then you post it everywhere so you can like what? Public shame me or, or, or cancel me or whatever it's called. Like I'm, like I'm some racist lady at a donut shop. Eat shit, motherfucker. You don't know me. That's not who I am. I'm actually a really friendly person. Two months ago, if you came running by... Uh, and, and you stopped to catch a breath, I would have stood there for 20 minutes and made conversation with you about The Bachelor or Harry Potter or whatever you wanted to talk about. And, and you, you, you would have thought we were best fucking friends for Christ's sake. You would have gone home and told your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whomever you like to sleep with, doesn't matter to me by the way, you would have said to that person, um, hey, have you ever met the guy with the cute dog who lives at, at 483? He's super friendly. We should invite him over for a cocktail. And then if you had done that, I would have said yes. Because that's the person who I was two months ago. And I would have brought my husband along because he's an amazing conversationalist. And the four of us would have had a great fucking night together. But guess what? It's a whole new world. <laughs> that was then, bitch. This is now. 
Things are changing by the minute. We can't even breathe around each other anymore. Now the tigers are catching it, man. The goddamn tigers. It's a whole new world that we live in. That's the saddest part. We're not the people who we were. It breaks my heart because I loved my life. I loved the person that I was. Maybe someday, maybe someday we'll be those people again. God, I hope so. I hope for all of us. But until then, we have got to stay six feet away from each other. So go get a damn yardstick and double it, you dumb motherfucker.